And welcome to It's for Life. Did you guys know that Utata Nelson Mandela was once known as David Mutamai? It's right here at Lily's Leaf Farm where he disguised himself as a farm worker mm. so that he can find a safe place where he can operate. In 1961, it was a place of hiding for Bora Politike Barena back then. But it proved to not be so safe. In 1963, 11, in July, we were taken to the 19th, eight of which were taken to prison for sabotage. So seven of them were trialed, the eighth one being Utata Nelson Mandela. They were trialed at the Ravonial trial, where they were sentenced to life in prison and sent to Robben Island. And the reason why the trial that changed South Africa is called the Ravonial trial, but to find out more about this amazing place, you know, it's going to be an appetizing well show for you guys. Food anthropology, so stay tuned. Because what? We're cooking, cooking, cooking in the kitchen, cooking, cooking. like to welcome you to Lily's Leaf, one of the most important historical sites in South Africa in recent history. Lily's Leaf used to be this rural isolated farming place, which was purchased by the Neven PTY, front company owned by the Burnt Communist Party, but it later on became the home of Umkondewe Sizwe, which they had Arthur Goroach and his family to stay in this house so that the police would never suspect exactly what was going on here. So we have all those men who were involved in the Vona trial, from Nelson Mandela, Governor Mbeki, Amat Kathrata, Dennis Goldberg, but Nelson was not arrested here. He was already serving five years in prison when those men were arrested. He was arrested on his way, coming back from Chief Albert Lutuli outside Tawiki Natal. So why his name is always around is because yes, 1961 October, he was the one who stayed here before. Oh. So this is Arthur Goldrat, Hazel Goldrat, and their two little boys, Paul and Nicholas. The main people that stayed in the house is forefront people. They were used by the ANC to cover so that police never knew exactly what the farm was about. Yeah, so Hazel was detained for 90 days, but you, did you know, do you know anything about solitary detention for 90 days? It was a law that was passed and then to um, torture people. It was worse, like they put you in prison for 30 days. And once you step out of prison, when they release you on your last day, once you're out of the gate, they re-arrest you back again for another 30 days and another 30 days. So they call it 90-day detention law. Yeah. Can you imagine? In the maroon color, we've got all the names of the participants that helped the ANC, the MK leaders. So that's why they're linked in the uh, maroon color, because they were leaders. They took uh, happened meetings in the Thatch Cottage, the main room where the, uh, the raid happened. 11 July 1963, the police swooped in and arrested the members of the MK in the Thatch Cottage, having their last final meeting. Why the last final meeting? Because the other thing, they had suspected that Lily Smith wasn't safe anymore. So they sought another one in Krugers uh, in Traveling. Then they didn't know that Lily Smith was to be their last meeting. Boom, we don't know who to um, snitch the, uh, the place, but we only have suspicions on who could have sold Lily's Leaf to the police. How lucky are they to get to chat to the legend, Dennis Goldberg? This place is about heroes, mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, they call me a legend. <laughs> <laughs> but really, what was brilliant about people like O.R. Tambo, and it's his anniversary tomorrow, mm -hmm and Nelson Mandela and the rest of our generation was to mobilize millions of people, not just in Mkonto West in the ANC, in the United Democratic Front, 700 organizations 
trade unions, church groups, cultural groups, sports groups, mm -hmm. civic associations. Mm -hmm. In the end, two million people taking concerted action was the final push that brought us freedom. It needs great leaders, but you can't lead unless there are people involved. Mm -hmm. It's mobilizing people that matters. And this place really does show people. Hello everybody. Hello. 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 Morning guys. Morning. Morning. You guys are looking nice. Word. Education. <laughs> Let me educate you guys. You guys are going to be spending Nagolo now with a very incredible woman. The person that you guys are going to be working with, get author. Ne? Yes. Because we are now focusing on a legend himself, which is the legacy of Nelson Mandela. Mm, mm, mm. We want to book a hunger for freedom. Yeah. Okay, so they can only be busy, look cool, calm, na, get a bit of sleep, feel it, na. But I'm gonna be it again, and then we'll introduce him. Yeah. Something. You know, be uh, for me, you know. Well, the nice thing about today, Kigore, the joke that's about to be ready up here. It's about the joke that's longer than that. You hold this as a man, they're like, "Oh, yeah, nobody rat, right?" Uh, but one thing that I'm gonna say, Kigore, as you cook, forget about just the taste and everything that you'll be doing. But how it relates to different cultures. So earlier on, we were talking about surprise alone. Like you surprises. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Yo. Yes. <laughs> no, really, I know you are because when I were another another little boy and I, you know, you said you were a cook. Yeah. This is the time to actually prove. Oh, you're a cook. Yeah. I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So I think we're going to be together at the outdoor joint. Yeah. All right. Um, and you can join us. Hello, hello. How are you? Hi, I'm yeah. good. Hello, Anna. Yeah. Hi, I'm Anna. Hi. Pleased to meet you, Anna. Good. Anna, uh, can you just break it down to these guys uh, who you are and uh, what would they be expecting today? Okay, well, I am a food anthropologist, which simply means that I'm a nosy person that likes to look inside other people's cooking pots <laughs> and find out, you know, if we are what we eat, who are we? Mm. So what we're going to look at today is who was Mandela through the things that he cooked and ate and shared with other people. Okay, that sounds interesting, guys. Yep. So yeah. you actually had it that close. Now you know yeah. what she actually does. Okay, and I, um, we're going to leave them to you. Okay. Guys? We're here in the Rivonia kitchen with Lina Molapisane, uh, who is the hot kitchen chef here um, and has very kindly agreed to give us her space. What, guys, what I'm going to get you to do is you're going to each of you make one dish. So at the end, we'll have a full meal that's different aspects of Madiba's culinary life. So the starter will be chicken wings um, because when he was a teenage boy he had a very embarrassing um, encounter with a girl that he was trying to impress and chicken wings that went horribly wrong so mm -hmm. that that's <laughs> that's the first story um, and then the main course is going to be actually the only meal that Madiba ever made because Madiba is a is not a, so much a cook as an eater um, and he's a very enthusiastic eater but as far as we know he never so much as made a cup of tea except one time at Lily's Leap. So in fact, right here in this space, he made a meal for Winnie Mandela who had been secretly snuck into the site. And he made a meal to try and impress her and to show he'd been away a long time and to show her how much he loved her and he'd put all this effort in. And as he made this meal and it got more and more fancy and delicious, she got crosser and crosser and he thought, but I'm trying to, to be so nice, and why is this going wrong? And eventually she looked at this, because she knew he couldn't cook, and she said, which one of your girlfriends taught you how to do this? <laughs> so it didn't go the way that he had planned. And in fact, he just learned to um, cook on the, while well, he was on the run. You know, there was nobody to cook for him, so it wasn't one of his girlfriends. He had simply learned on his own. So one of you is going to make that meal that made Winnie so cross. 
And then the last one of you is going to make Malfa pudding, which is a great South African classic anyway, but in this case was served at a meal that P.W. Boerter and Henry Kissinger had, um, where the release of Nelson Mandela was discussed. And P.W. Boerter, who was the president of the apartheid state at the time, got enormously cross and refused to, to discuss the matter. Um, so your pudding will be Malfa pudding. So it's three different parts of Mandela's life told on a plate. Okay, so now I'm told I'm allowed to decide who does what. That mm -hmm. which one of you's done the most cooking before? You have. Okay. You have as well. Okay, so you've done the least cooking. Okay, well then I think probably what we <laughs> should do, I'm not sure if this is very mean, but you sound like you're the most like Mandela in this situation. So we're going to give you Madiba's special meal that he made um, for Winnie that, that didn't go so well. Um, and then why don't you be Mrs. Malfa Pudding and you can be Mr. Chicken Wings. So shall we start with the Malfa Pudding? Right, my first victim. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, so here is your recipe. Um, the first thing I need you to do is to crack an egg into this bowl. Sorry. That's okay. Rick, I need you to sieve this sugar, it's a cup of sugar, into the, the egg. So now you've got an egg, one egg and a cup of sugar, and you, you need to beat it together hard until what you get is a sort of um, rich, creamy mixture. Oh. So the next thing you're going to do is take your tablespoon of apricot jam and put it in with your eggs and sugar. So for your next trick, now that you've got it all beautiful and creamy and you really have done a very nice job there, okay, so now you're going to add your flour and your bicarb to that mixture. Yeah. Yes. And then I'm slowly, slowly going to give you a little bit of your, this is a half a cup of cream and half a cup of milk. Okay. Just said you were the least experienced cook so we've given you in fact the longest job so this was the meal that Madiba made at Lily's Leaf for Mrs. Mandela um, and he wasn't a very experienced cook but he was trying really hard so it's the kind of meal you might make if you were wanting to show somebody that you really loved them but you weren't that confident in a kitchen so he made mashed potatoes and peas and steak Obviously, So, when you make mashed potato, you need to have a sort of butter and either butter and milk or butter and cream mixture. Now, in the meantime, you've got two things that you still need to do. The one is to make a steak, but that will do just before people are going to eat it. You don't want your steak to hang around. And the other is you can blanch your peas. So you need to get a pot of boiling water, put some salt in it, and then when the water is boiling vigorously, you're just going to put your peas. So, as I say, this was a meal that uh, Madiba had as a little boy. Um, well, he wasn't a little boy, he was a teenager. He was 14, and he really fancied this girl whose name was Winnie Mattiolo. Mattiolo. And she was the daughter of the Methodist minister in the community. So they were quite posh. So in Madiba's house, for instance, they ate from a communal pot yeah. and they ate with their hands. In Winnie Mattiolo's house, where there was like, you know, lots of sort of Victorian values, that um, they, um, they ate with knives and forks, that they ate very sort of Eurocentric food. Um, so he got invited, Winnie Mattiolo, who I think quite liked him back. So she invited him to lunch, and her sister, she had a big sister who was mean, and her big sister, 
she fancied another Mandela who was also in the community and she thought it wouldn't be good if they were both going out with Mandela boys. Yeah. <laughs> so she decided that she was going to sabotage her younger sisters and by extension Madiba's date. And then she deliberately served poor Madiba, 14 year old Madiba who'd never used a knife and fork. She deliberately gave him the chicken wings and then sat back and watched him because she knew that he didn't know how to use a knife and fork and she knew that the hardest thing to eat <laughs> with a knife and fork, nobody eats chicken wings with a knife and fork. He tried and tried and it spun around the plate and eventually shot off the plate altogether. Um, and the big sister said, well, you see, you can't go out with him. He's just rubbish. He's a country bumpkin, doesn't even know how to use a knife and fork. And Winnie Mattiolo, to her credit, despite her big sister being so mean, said, that doesn't matter, I'll teach him. So you are going to take a baking tray and, and you're going to cook us a whole lot of chicken wings in the oven. You're going to roast them in the oven. All you're doing is tossing them in salt and pepper and with a little bit of olive oil and shove them in the oven to roast. So you can use your colleague's oven. I'm a very vibrant cook. I'm a very on-the-moment cook. I'm also, yeah. There's a, a whole glory hole of a cupboard there with pretty pots and you, you decide how you want to plate your food. So, knock yourself out. Out of the three meals, this is preparing. I think it was enjoyable because I believe we would be put our heart and soul in cooking. But when you into it, then you get the best results. That's how I feel. It's one thing cooking food with love, but you should serve it with a passion. Aaron Morisi, a well-known TV presenter from Shift, excellent cook as well, has been invited to be a critic for our participants. Um, so my name is Polani. I prepared your starter, which is just um, fried wings. Yeah, very nice. So this is soy sauce. Anna, right, besides the class of doing with fucking life, mm. trust me, I'm very bad at wasting food. I eat <laughs> a lot. So I want to be able to exactly. drink my bone. Of course. I can with the conversation. Sir, oh. mm. just in time. Just in time. Just in time. The Polani was here for the Nasa bullies, no bullies, South Data. Then the bullies and get played. Oh, okay. Nice setup, by the way. It's beautiful. Thank you. Welcome, China. This is this is an experience. Yeah, we're Thank supposed you. to just eat in wings. Come. No, I'm certainly liking this. Uh, what do you think? It's good. No. Oh. Yes. This is uh, simple but tasteful. Polani, I could have this every Monday morning if yeah. you know what I mean. <laughs> well done. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's the most important thing. Look, I haven't seen him doing other things, but life I love. Mm. He can cook mm. and he can even start on social media. Mm -hmm. Have a cookie channel on social media. There's a girl, she's 13. Yo, Sinagel, uh, we still have the... But again, he said we had it from Kolani. Kolani first started us with the fucking knife, so we didn't have to wait. Uh, so, do you guys have any? I'm so sorry. I'm going to start with the server. 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 
know how do you surf when you surf? And you should. Oh, no, most let's yeah, see, let's ask, let's ask this is like a while. Why, why, why did you surf did. like this? Uh, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Mr. Chagela pays for the house. No, no, but I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. So, I'm going to go to the house. Okay. okay. From my side, I'll say pay attention to detail as well. Know your sequence of serving. You clear the table, make sure you're ready for the next meal. If there's any refills for drinks or water, ask. I felt like I was sabotaged, and I felt very bad. You can't serve someone with the way I can't. I can't serve someone with the way I can't. I can't serve someone with the way I can't. I can't serve someone with the way I can't. I can't serve someone with the way I can't. I can't serve someone with the way I can't. I can't serve someone with the way I can't. I can't serve someone with the way I can't. I can't serve someone with the way I can't. I can't serve someone with the way I can't. I can't serve someone with the way I can't. I can't serve someone Could you maybe give him some fruit? You could do a David Motsumai sort of fruit platter. There is a fruit salad. Yeah, fruit salad, right. Okay, I'm just gonna go prepare fruit salad in a cup with him. OPA, what I usually email the pudding because of Indian banner. So I had to think out of the box what to give me know if fruit salad would be okay if we say fruit salad. And then I had to go back and then I'm going to fruit salad. It looks nice. It looks very nice. Okay. But I love the fact that I was worried you were talking about the apple because I gave you the apple. But <laughs> this is this is <laughs> awesome. We sell food. No, I wasn't actually. How do you really feel right now? I feel very happy um, because from Ipkalen, um, I didn't know how to make a pudding up until today, and I'm I'm happy about it. Turn up your phone. So and then I had to do the plating from the scratch. I had with Mr. Manu Gutting, so they got in the food. Um, when Aaron was giving me the compliment, I. I think I felt overwhelmed because it is our total compliment. You get it once in a while. So I was very happy when I got a compliment from him. And we've sadly come to the end of today's episode. for sticking through Lerena. You know, that's why today we've decided to pay homage to the people who are here. So, when I go higher, go and comment your fear. Go and tell your friends about the people who are here. Go and tell your friends about Go and conquer your fear. Go to It for Life, our Facebook page, and tell us how are you conquering your fear. Ganeta, this has been It's for Life, SABC2. Catch us next week, same time, same place. I've been your humble host, Kaurela Sorolana Sam Kulwan. We'll see you. We'll see you.